Annyeonghaseyo, Jonun Ambaimnida, and today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite K pop groups of all time, Big Bang, and the many scandals, including Burning Sun, and how I think that South Korea has a justice issue. So, take a seat, grab some soju, and hang out with me. If you're unfamiliar with the K pop industry, it is a very manufactured pop industry in south korea there are a couple big companies that are responsible for the majority of the most popular groups um big bang are signed to yg entertainment the exact same as to anyone blackpink groups like that big bang were most popular within the second generation of k-pop um so we're talking like 15 years ago they were at their peak when i was growing up they were my favorite g dragon was my bias still is love you saring heyo um i literally i had a g dragon birthday cake for my 16th birthday i tried to find a picture but i i can't find it anywhere um yeah i i was a big big bang fan they debuted in 2006 under yg entertainment um before they debuted you know it began with g dragon and taeyang they were friends around that age um growing up as well and they were both very much interested in singing and dancing um and then they went on to be trainees for yg yg asked g dragon if he knew anybody else that would be interested in forming this group and he suggested another childhood friend top top at this point was already performing as a bit of an underground rapper he joined the group as the main rapper and we had daesung and sungri daesung auditioned to join the group and Sungri was part of like some sort of national talent show that was televised to join a different group um ended up in this group uh, I don't know why because he was never very talented or interesting and I will stick by that as I introduce the members as well you will see that I have chose the most beautiful photo for Sungri because the things he has done if you are unaware just wait the things he has done he does not deserve a good picture of himself he just doesn't big bang at the time were seen as very much like the cool hip-hop type of different group it was just different to the rest of the k-pop scene at that time where other entertainment companies such as sm and jyp focused on a more cutesy wholesome south korean look and attitude they didn't have the greatest image um they never really have just because they don't fit into the squeaky clean south korean image of perfection like all the other groups seemingly did with that being said they face their fair share of controversies and scandals and that's what i want to talk about today i'm going to start from probably at least to worst um, we'll start with Taeyang. Taeyang became interested in music by some Korean artists that were bringing hip hop to Korea at the time that he was growing up and he found that very influential and that is no surprise in terms of his style. Um, Taeyang has been the center of many western controversies. I don't know if it ever really made it to Korea but for cultural appropriation because our king Taeyang loves a good cornrow, loves a good lock. What is that man doing? Um, I mean, understandably, it's very different in South Korea where they have very little to no black people there and they have no idea of this. They just think it's a cute style choice and it is a very, uh, very different experience um with that unlike jay park who grew up in america and knows it's wrong but we'll move on 
that's pretty much the only scandal that Taeyang has ever really had. Now I don't really know where to place these next ones because these next three are pretty bad but it really depends on what angle you look at it. I think I'll probably go for my beloved duo GD and Top first because in my mind this is not as extreme as Daesung. 2011-2012 I think G Dragon was found to be smoking weed in a nightclub in Japan. In Japan, it is not illegal to get high, but it is illegal to possess. In South Korea, it is illegal to even think about marijuana, basically. Like, it is extreme. So you best know that he was... It became such a huge scandal. I remember it. And I just remember also thinking, like... Yeah, and there's a song with GD with uh, T.O.P. in GD on top that is called High High. Like, I grew up around blazers. I thought that's what that song meant. So I didn't understand the point of the scandal. It made no sense to me. But the way that he apologized was really like he did something terrible and it really wasn't. And this has lingered over G Dragon's head for years um, recently. As of last year, he was accused of more drug abuse and the South Korean police are really trying to instigate this war on drugs. Like we could talk about Pop Bomb from 21 who she has been cancelled and like it's like she'll never make a comeback and nobody will ever respect her in Korea for taking Adderall her ADHD medication that she was prescribed when she was a teenager in America and she has been blacklisted from the industry ever since like it so yeah so G Dragon was accused again last year and he volunteered himself for police questioning knowing that he was innocent um and in December he was cleared of all wrongdoings um, they did drug tests, they investigated him, they questioned him, nothing. But a lot of people online really wanted to say that G-Dragon was on drugs. We'll move on to T.O.P. next. His is basically the same story. He was found to be smoking marijuana while he was enlisted in the Korean army. In 2016, he was caught to be smoking marijuana he at first denied it and said that it was just like a vape or something um and then later admitted that it was in fact marijuana a year later following that incident he was then found to have been smoking with a yg trainee at the time han so he that he was believed to be in a relationship with they were thought to have smoked marijuana together in his house at least three times this is another thing and so he got pushed to be the blame for this issue she clearly wasn't t.o.p was clearly no stranger to these things but even so it is marijuana we don't even have a strong as strong uh reaction to like if we found out that someone was doing meth or something like we we do not have the same is <sighs> anyways so yeah this happened he then got given probation 10 months probation i believe and then no two years probation and if he failed his probation he would get 10 months in prison for smoking weed shortly after this um news broke that t.o.p had been rushed to the hospital following a drug overdose he had overdosed on benzodiapine which is like a sedative sleeping pill anti-anxiety type of thing i've taken them before for flight it's a controlled drug but it's something that you get prescribed and he had overdosed on this now knowing the k-pop industry a lot of idols have made attempts on their lives and many have unfortunately succeeded it really wouldn't surprise me if this had been an attempt and following his statement while he was in emergency care 
it seems like he had been depressed for a while and maybe this was an attempt in a reaction to how he was being treated to have been found with marijuana and it's crazy to think that he getting caught with marijuana was enough for him to that's what it seems like to me because this man had been diagnosed no this man had been prescribed these drugs for over a year at this point he knows how to use them i don't think it was a misusage problem i'm just gonna say that this was top scandal um the reaction is severely disproportionate if you ask me but there we go this is what i'm here to talk about today We'll move on to Daesung now. So in 2011, Daesung may have been driving under the influence and essentially on the same stretch of road that he would later go on, two minutes prior to he would drive past that part of road, a motorcyclist had had an accident and fallen off their bike. A taxi driver had seen this, pulled over and gone to try and see what the situation was, call emergency services, etc. Daesung then comes flying down the road. He then hits the motorcyclist who is laying on the side of the road at this point and then kept going. I think he hit the taxi as well. And when later questioned by the police, they asked, why didn't you stop? Why didn't you react? He said he tried to brake, but the brakes didn't work. The forensics show that he did not try to break. He was never formally charged with any real prison time because of this incident. As the police were not able to prove whether or not the motorcyclist was alive or dead at the time that Dae Sung had crashed into the motorcyclist. Now, they had been laying on the floor for two minutes prior to Dae Sung crashing into them. I don't think that... The cyclists will have passed away from their injuries, nor do investigators, by the time that Daesung had gotten there. Really, no punishment served for that one whatsoever. Zero. And I feel like, to this day, people have just totally forgotten about it. I feel like the moment the investigation was over, people have forgotten about it. I remember having this conversation with a friend, and then being like, oh, but like they found that he wasn't guilty you know, that he hadn't actually killed somebody, you know, he just hit them. I just broke my nail. (laughs) Help! Help! The worst of all, Sangri. What Sangri did has been so awful that it has made worldwide news. And things are still coming out all the time even though it's been years. This man still thinks he can make a comeback, but we'll we'll get into that later. First and foremost, in 2012, actually literally on my birthday, my 16th birthday while I was busy eating a G-Dragon cake, I am not kidding, Sangri's first real scandal came out and that was a leaked photo to a Japanese gossip magazine with him asleep in a bed after a rendezvous shall we say and the person who had sent the photo had said that he was very aggressive that he had hurt her like choked her hit her those types of things without her consent and that once he was finished he would just finish anywhere on her and just throw her a rag not a crime very disgusting speaks to his character however this was his first scandal and i remember like i said i was 16 at the time and i remember walking down the street talking about this scandal with my friend jess we were both big big bang fans and and neither of us were honestly surprised that Sangri had gotten into a scandal like this. We thought it was very much in his nature. Now, for a 16 and a 15 year old to think that this is very much in this man's nature, uh, what led us to believe that, please? Because I remember this conversation very clearly. And I was like, I'm not surprised. And she's like, no, me neither. I feel like the signs were there. 
I do have some clips that I will show you a little bit later but these clips very much show like we knew his personality we knew that there was something wrong with him and so did the big bang members maybe they didn't know exactly what was going on i think they didn't want to be any part of his friend group that was very clear and therefore i don't think they really knew what was happening but it always felt like sungri was the odd one out within the group so it really doesn't surprise me that they would have no idea what was going on behind the scenes essentially some point in the 2010s Sungri had invested with some of his business partners shady business partners into a nightclub that they would call the burning sun and this was in Gangnam Seoul it's a very upscale area think like Mayfair for us or you know that type of thing so news of the scandal had started appearing in 2018 um there had been multiple complaints like people were reporting that they had suddenly gotten very drunk and then the next thing they know they woken up and there is whoever they were drinking with there ripping their clothes off things like this um, there's even this video that I'll show you of a woman being dragged out of the nightclub. The nightclub tried to pass it off as an angry, drunk Thai woman who had passed her limits and they were just trying to get her out. But in reality, I believe it came out that that person had been drugged or whatever and people were dragging her out. Link to this nightclub and the burning sun scandal are a bunch of high profile k-pop idols and korean businessmen alike including obviously sungri we also have jjy jong hoon of fti jong hyun from cm blue so these were just a few of the names involved in this the allegations also included something called molka that they call it in korean which is like hidden camera basically those types of adult videos where it's an unwilling unknowing participant and the hidden camera someone has installed one in a bathroom or a lampshade those types of things a lot of allegations were coming out not against just in this nightclub but against certain members that were involved in this also included a cacao talk chat which if you're unfamiliar with cacao talk it's very much just like whatsapp um koreans use this to talk between each other you can have groups you can video call all those different types of things right chats that had videos of molka and also videos especially jjy was one of the people that was um very frequently posting with women that were clearly out of it totally unconscious between members they were laughing about how some woman was unconscious they hit her head while they were even one of the more damning things was that sungri was using burning sun to sell women essentially he would have these high-flying businessmen um known people things like that from korea and japan alike um that would come to burning sun and they would have these special vip areas and there would be people scrambling to get whoever looks the most unconscious to this vip whilst texting each other about it like it's hilarious like it's something to be proud of the lead journalist that brought all of this to light was a lady named gang Gyung yun and for her amazing acts she received so much hatred so much backlash this was a woman that was pregnant at the time that all of this was coming out and she was exposing a bunch of this stuff was constantly receiving hate for exposing their opas to this day 
many people still believe that she is a bad person and that she lied about all of this. Guhara was an idol from Kara, a Korean girl group and also a solo idol as well. She was very close to Songri and JJY and the idols that were in this circle and she reached out to this Chala list and said I'm close with these guys and I've seen really questionable things on their phones and then she helped get more information for Investigator Kung. Due to the backlash that Guhara faced because of this, because of helping to expose what happened, unfortunately, not only her, but Sully from FX self-exited. To this day, none of these idols or businessmen have really served any real time. JJ White, who I think did the longest sentence, just got released this year. He served four years, 11 months, and 27 days. So just under five years. This man has done under five years for being a serial rapist, distributing revenge and also hidden camera, um, his part in the trafficking in Burning Sun, um bribery like whatever else sangri was charged with mediating or purchasing prostitution habitual or overseas gambling illegal currency transactions business operation violations instigating violence embezzlement taking or sharing illegal images and this is just what he was charged with this is not the extent of what sangri actually did and what time did Sangri serve? Hmm. Sangri served less than 18 months. He served less than 18 months. He was supposed to serve three years. Even that is not enough. And right now, he's going around Asia, anywhere that will have him. Like, literally, there was a video of him in Cambodia recently saying that he's going to bring G-Dragon to Cambodia. Why is this man free? Meanwhile, T.O.P. has no real support anymore. It was announced last year that he's going to be a part of Squid Game 2. And even netizens did not want to see him in Squid Game 2 because of his drug scandal. He is riding still to this day off the name of Big Bang and his other Big Bang members. And it is sickening to watch people eat it up like he did nothing wrong this is what gets me the most is truly injustice this is the man that should really have been counseled cancelled ground into the ground goodbye good day never see you again goodbye lock you up for the rest of your life goodbye and yet he's doing his little hey cambodia hey if you like me, I'll bring G-Dragon back here sometime. Oh my god, you wanna hear me? You wanna hear me, like, mime to Fantastic Baby? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. It is insane. Especially when you compare what everybody else has lost for so much less. I mean, just look at this man. This is not a man that should ever be free. This is not a man that should ever be near a woman ever again. Anyways, as promised, here are some videos that really show that we should have been paying attention a bit closer to Mr. Zungri. Um, watching these back, having watched them when I was like so young, and now knowing what I know, makes me feel so sick. So sick. 
anyways i'm gonna show you these videos and i'm gonna see my way out thank you very much for watching let me know your thoughts goodbye 빅뱅 형들이 살던 숙소로 이사를 갔어. 어. 응. 이사를 갔는데 근데 거기에 승리 형의 흔적이 남아 있네. 와, 이거. 와우, 이거 너무 어. 그 어떤 흔적이었어? 야동이 가득 담겨 있는 외장 아들을 승리가 두고 간 거야. 정장. 오. 옷장이었어, 옷장. 옷장에? 옷장 깊숙한 곳에서. 깊숙한 곳에서. 어, 케케. 아, 거기에 또 숨겨놨어 옷장에. 되게 영롱한 빛이 이렇게 나고 있는 거야. 태블릿 PC 연결을 했는데 어. 거기 이제 항상. 이름별로. 와 분류를. 그 댓글 폴더가 있는데 진짜 그 배우별로. 그걸 보는 순간 승리의 이상형을 다볼수 있었어. 야, 잠깐만, 야, 잠깐만, 잠깐만. 여기서 탐정 들어간다. 얘 며칭이었니? 아, 아니, 아니, 형층이었어요. 그리고 아, 거기 하드웨어에 승리라고 적혀 있었어. <웃음> 물론 좋은 친구들도 음. 너무 많지만 이렇게 언뜻언뜻 이제 공연장에서 이제 스쳐 지나가면서 음. 사람 인상을 보면은 음. 저 사람은 약간 <웃음> 좀 이상해 될것 같아요. 승리를 인간적으로 좋아해서 아. 오는 게 아니라 승리의 음. 명함을 보고 승리한테 아. 다가온 사람 같다는 아. 그 기운이 있는 사람들이 있잖아요. 음. 근데 그런 사람들이랑 있는 입고 같이 일을 하려고 하는 것들에 대해서 좀 걱정이 될 때가 있어요. 아. 카메라 제가 듣고 있다가 승리야. 근데 우리가 어느 순간부터 우리가 언제부터 그랬다고 음. 이렇게 우리가 돈 얘기를 계속 이렇게 해야 되니 음. 우리가 다 열정으로 이렇게 모인 사람들끼리 아, 아, 이제 아, 미래에 대한 아, 이런 아, 얘기를 해야 되는데 아, 왜 아, 모든 게 너는 어느 순간부터 아, 돈, 돈에 아, 대한 네. 포커스가 좀 많아진 것 같아 라고 네. 얘기를 해서 되게 거예요. 되게 현실적이고 지금 우리랑 밥을 안 먹어요 네. 그러니까 같이 아, 자리에 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 저희끼리 아, 먹는 자리에도 잘안 오고 아. 승리 씨 사실 따로 친구들도 어, 다른 친구들이 있어 아. 지금 많아 사실, 많아요 음. 승리가 가수기도 하지만 어, 사업가예요. 어, 거기 아, 내가 볼 거기 로비스트 주지. 아, 아, 아. 장르도 좋지만 일명 FF라는 그 크리스마스 창업 파티에 어, 갔다가 앱으로 두개 들어가네. 이거 뭐 들어가네요. 판타스틱 페스티벌이었어. 판타스틱 크리스마스 날 아. 자기가 파티를 연 거죠. 아, 집에 네. 가면은 파티 연회장에 사람들은 오는데 그 주인공을 볼수 없잖아요. 음. 주인공은 항상 어디선가 이렇게. 그래, 약간 약간 이게 미쳐. 전 선생님 거의 보지 못했어요. 어. 어디지 어디지 하고 있는데 네. 자기가 네. 여태까지 가본 파티 중에 이런 파티는 처음 봤다고. 강남에 논다는 애들은 다 있는 거야. <웃음> <웃음> 들어가는 입구부터 엄청 화려한 다들 여자분들 은 정말 풀착장 드레스와 아. 이런 어, 남자들은 다 턱시도. 어. 전 영화제 찍는 영화제도 그렇게는 안 하고. 어. 이렇게 예쁘, 예쁘신 분들이 네, 여자분들이 네. 이렇게 쇼를 하면서 이렇게 양 <웃음> 옆에 정말 이렇게 줄 주기 쫙 내려고 오면 약간 마지막에 그딱 위에서 턱시도 입고 계속 이렇게 보고 있어 그러니까 <웃음> 야 주인이 저 밑에 있는 거야 어른 데리는 거야 상탈을 상탈을 못 받았더니 너무 멋있어 상탈을 상탈을 못 받았더니 너무 멋있어 일본 선생님이 또 이제 한국 오신다 그래서 아 그러면 또 오시니까 제가 조금 안내 하겠습니다. 그래서 제가 해외 손님들을 좀 모시려고 조금 파티를 준비하려다가 좀 이상한 데서 하면 안 되니까 되게 좀그 당시 핫했던 장소를 다 대관을 해가. 올해는 어 아마 이 영상이 지금 한 동안 다섯 명 있는 모습이 정말 마지막이 되는 그런 영상이 들려나요? 뭐 그럴 수도 있겠죠. 네. 잠깐 쉬는 시간에 멤버 형들이 어 5년 뒤에 빅뱅과 5년 뒤 팬분들에게 타임 캡슐을 했죠. 어, 타임캡슐. 제가 또 이런데 약간 좀 재미가 강합니다. 어, 팬분들에게 좀 어떤 내용들을 팬분에게 쓰면서 멤버들에게 좀 이렇게 오. 멤버들이 5년 뒤 어떻게 돼 있을지라고 어. 제가 이렇게 오. 그래도 해서 VIP에게 쓰는 거죠. 네. 비록 우리 네 명이지만 끝까지 응원해. 잠깐만, 잠깐만, 잠깐만. 아, 잠깐만, 네, 잠깐만. 왜네 명이에요? 잠깐만. 잠깐만. 5년 뒤에 네 명이에요. 아, 그렇게 한가 좀 얘기해 주세요. 아, 아, 그런 거죠, 지금. 비록 우린 지금 네 명이지만 네. 끝까지 우리를 빅뱅으로서 기억해 주고 오, 늘 오. 우리 투어를 하면은 네 명인지가 좀 오래 됐을 때네요. 어, 잠깐만, 잠깐만, 잠깐만. 그 친구는 활동할 때는 안 그래 보였는데 아. 갑자기 적성에 맞는다며 아. 장군까지 되겠다며. <웃음> 장관이요. 장군까지 장군. 되겠다며? 그 말뚝을 어... 받는. 어... 아니 한한한 한, 한 멤버가 군대 좀 오래 있는 모양인데요? 예. <웃음> 그럼 우리가 5년 뒤에 한번 가볼까요? 네. 5년 뒤에 빅뱅으로 아, 출발. 진짜 한다고? 아, 어, 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 결혼 축하드려요. 아, 정말 형. 
야잘 사니? 어떻게 사니? 요즘 우리 내심 활동하고 있는데 잠깐만 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 잠깐